That's my body trying to prove me wrong, because I was going to say I don't feel that bad, but I was going to put an asterisk on my that, body saying, if I leave, it's probably because I'm coughing too much, and I don't want to be obnoxious on stream, because I'm definitely going to miss muting myself at least once. Alright, I'm going to do the usual, hey, I'm streaming the thing. It's like, hey there, I'm Jello Apocalypse, and I... And I found a button on my computer that says I can talk to you. And I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> so it looks like I live here now. Hey there, we're here in day 24 of this stream. I, uh, I've plumb run out of things to talk about, but hey. Free me from this eternal torture. I think I saw a bug in my kitchen. <laughs> but then I uh, bent down and it was just a fuzzy. Possibly from some sweatpants or maybe my belly button. <laughs> Who can say? <laughs> Quality stuff. even answer some of them okay i'm sure people will be really thrilled that you're doing an apatheterized q a stream and you will not have one of any of the accessible voice actors being will or majin who are there i mean just that's, me that's fine nobody ever asks any questions pertinent to the voice actors <laughs> it's yeah fine. but it will be you and some fuck tm I mean, you were involved fairly heavily <laughs> with the original version of this story. We just... Yes, but they don't know that. We just hit an arc where none of your characters showed up. Well, I mean, we did name drop Meryl. <laughs> You're right. What was I thinking? All right. Um, I guess I'll make this a side announcement. Yeah, I'll, I'll bug everyone who cares. Yeah. Yeah. Answer yeah. Some epithet questions. Come. Come! <laughs> Exclamation point. Uh, and then let's do the same thing on the stabbiness wiki or whatever the hell this is. Where the. Where to. Am I in the right place? Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? Announcements, crew streams, that's what it's called. Oh, Savvy's wow, streaming right now, isn't he? Um, oh, yeah, he is. I don't really want to cut into his stream, but... Oh, but hi, like Marissa. You, but so, like you are, and you will. I Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not going to not do this. Um, why is Stink the best character? Because Stink is the best character. So there's one voice actor. We got our <laughs> casting director, Marissa Lenti, voice of Stink. <laughs> <laughs> I should also release the Stink shirt, of which she is currently the only owner. <laughs> Stink's number one fan. Stink's number one fan and Stink. I, um... <sighs> I know you're I know you're sick, but would you be able to be the person who's like, oh, there's another question. Well, of course. I I fully expected that you would want that to be my responsibility. I didn't want to set up an external does. monitor since my computer's already got a lot going on. Yeah, that would have been like steps or something. That sounds like a computer related thing, and who wants to do that? It's a pain to move it. I'm I'm sitting on like my house has two tables, uh, and in total, is, um, three in total. <laughs> I I have a place where I can eat, uh, though that that one's not big enough for any kind of setup. I have a picnic table that you would use at like an outdoor family gathering, which is what I'm on currently in one room, and then I have like kind of a real table on the other, and this table is barely large enough to hold all of my items. 
Oh, I guess I should maybe mention that I'm doing this on Tumblr too, since that's the place people don't stop asking me things. Uh, I'll keep his eyes shaded for now. It's kind of rad looking. I guess we could plug on Tumblr. I find that that's a worthless endeavor, but... it Normally, I would totally agree with you, but that is where I get all the asks. When will mm -hmm. Season 2 release? I don't know, man. Probably never, honestly. Uh, at earliest, like, summer next year. And I doubt that. I, uh, mm. I spent $300,000 on this project. I have no money now. So, unless someone wants to come along and give me a quarter mil, then I have to build up the money myself. And that takes time. You are very It just incorrect. takes some time. You are incorrect there, Farther Feel Good. Lamp is not Ramsey's VA. Who are you, Lamp? Oh, I'm Warped Lamp, the master of Twisted. In Epithet Erased, I play no one. But I am Jello's dear companion, and he doesn't like to stream by himself, so I'm here. I find any time I start with the intention of streaming by myself, I get very bored very fast, even if I'm trying. Okay, text. Epithet erased. That should that should be it, just epithet erased, and then people can find it if they want. <laughs> erased. <laughs> You may have been fooled into believing I was Ramsey because I'm sick as fuck right now. But I assure you, I'm not. I find, and like, no shade on whoever just said that, but I find that, like, people can't tell who voice actors are. It's they just... can't. I have I have been mistaken for Will before. You've also been mistaken for Keen and Jay before. That's right. I don't know how these things happen. Am I the creator of any of the characters? Not in the first episode, or not in the first season, rather. One of my characters was name dropped, and that's all she's gonna get. <laughs> but if there's more, you will theoretically see some of me. I mean, I would definitely, like, there's plenty of characters who would be showing up in season three if we got there that you have created. Yeah, that would be that would be plenty. That would I, be a lot of them. I also amazingly have plans for Slim if we get a season two, which like if you asked me a year ago who I thought wouldn't make it into Epithet Erased, he'd be at like the top of the list. But no. see, for me that would have been Arnold Markdown. But here we are. Everyone likes to shit on Arnold Markdown. <laughs> Honestly, Bugsley really flew under the radar because he was he, he was, was way worse, worse than Arnold. Had, worse. He was worse and had less screen time. <laughs> he's the he's like the Ravenclaw, where like everyone makes fun of Hufflepuff, but you just forget Ravenclaw exists. Yeah. All right, I'm actually I'm Jello Giovanni. No. What? No. <laughs> no, Giovanni is Kyle Ignacy. I made the show. Uh, the only, the only people I play are a bunch of like unimportant bonsai blasters. Legitimate. Okay, when, when I would watch like Gravity Falls or whatever, I'd be like, "Man, Alex Hirsch, why are you all the extras?" And I know the answer now, and it's because paying people to come in takes time and money. You know who's there in the directing booth? The director. And <laughs> if. If I don't want to pay $250 for someone to come in and go, ah, then I can do it. Shit. Um, yeah, no. I, the only named character I play is Ben. I'm also the Sky Watcher, I guess. He has a name. I mean, not like really, but... This is a cool poster. Yeah, this is what the full thing looks like. I'm um, I'm movie postering it up with some, because this is what the flats look like, which isn't bad, but like, can make it snazzy. It can be better. Uh, in the Sound Cadence Studios, which is where we record this, there's 
because uh, they do the they've done the casting for and recording for Ruby since volume four. Uh, they have some Ruby posters there with signatures, and I tend to walk around when I'm doing stuff there, and I have mm. sat and like stared at those Ruby posters for probably a collective nine hours. Um, so I want an Epithet Erase poster next to them. I wonder how much money Rhea wants for this. He said, Povertishly. <laughs> Uh, someone says they're running an anime campaign and what what they should know about doing that. Any have advice? Ever, have you ever GM'd before, period? Uh, yeah. Yes? Yeah, no, I I don't know why okay. I responded with yeah, like it was a question for me. <laughs> I guess I was agreeing that that was a good question. Like, yes, Thank you. if you've ever GM'd before, that is a good thing to consider in that question. If you haven't, it's actually kind of a pretty big undertaking. You have to make a lot of shit. Yeah, no, uh, any system that I make is very, very heavily dependent on the GM being good at game design. Because So, uh, be good at game design. Uh, assuming you've never done it before, then, like, until I hear your answer one way or the other, I'm just gonna assume. Um... Assuming you've never GM'd before, I might suggest not doing it in, but I don't know. Um, it's not a, it's not the worst system to do first. It's pretty easy numbers wise. It's easy on your players. It's hard on you. Um, yeah. I would say don't be afraid of changing your plans mid game. Uh, that's my big, like, that's the biggest pitfall that GMs, including myself, tend to fall into on their first outing. Like. Oh, you'll expect that this will go one way, and like you kind of have to railroad the players, especially because if it's an anime campaign, it might be a one shot. Um, don't don't railroad them. If if something weird happens, just roll with it. Your job is to lose, and your game's job is to be destroyed. So, yeah. I mean, there's like some rare exceptions, like for the fifth anime campaign I did. I spent like. 16 hours drawing a giant robot for this stupid big endgame giant robot fight and like There was sort of a preamble to that battle where it was like can you catch this character and the players had like an okay way of stopping her and I was like no, I'm not gonna let them because that means that they don't see this robot fight thing and I legit spent too much time on it and they will think it's cool so and it was was. That's the only time I've ever done that, though. Um, make sure... Check your timing. Uh, however long you think something will take, you're wrong. Yeah. Uh, any given combat will take... Bare minimum, if your players are the fastest motherfuckers on Earth, 45 not. minutes. Which, like... Man, were there any, like, combats that short in any game I've ever played? I think I've seen it once, but I can't remember what it was. Um, I try to move things along pretty quick and make amends, but... I don't know, uh, I don't know if I've gotten, like, below 45. You did have, like, real combats, too, in, like, a real system, which is very hard to blow through in that amount of time. Yeah, no. Basically, uh, all that you can do in that situation is your best. Like, you can, like, you as the GM, you can be as prepared as you want, and you can move your shit along as fast as possible. And that's really helpful when you do that, because it keeps the game moving, and it gives your players time to just mill around and be fucking morons. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at some of these questions. Have I thought of trying Rooster Teeth for Season 2? Yes, actually, because Miles Luna, the head writer of Ruby, seems to like Epithet Erased. Uh, so if Verve gets back to me and they're like, no, I am not against dragging my heels to Rooster Teeth and going, hey, you want a show? I can guarantee... Free clout! Hi. Hi, Rube, creator of Giovanni. I can guarantee... Hi, it is Rube, creator of Giovanni. And, also and my girlfriend. I love you. I love you too, Limp. That's gay. Yeah. 
you had to make a playable character for your next tabletop game, blah, 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 it had to be a race type of that race character, who would you pick? I don't really understand that question. For my next What? I mean... I wouldn't base any of them off an Epithet Erase character. All of Epithet Erase characters are already based off of playable characters. That'd be quite <laughs> the Ouroboros. That would be pointless. Uh, this is goddamn... my original character, Tiovani. Do real ass goddamn swords do lethal damage in the show? Okay, actually, in my head, real ass goddamn is like a classification of weapon in this universe. It's a weapon and, enchantment. And yeah, no, basically, and the uh, <laughs> and the answer is yes. Those are the weapons that can kill people. And you still have to like put in an effort. This is still a cartoon universe, so it has to be like a cutscene equivalent, but like no gun in the series is a real ass goddamn gun. They are like all airsoft rifles. Um what was something you really wanted to include in season one, but ended up having to be cut? Uh, Molly's friends were in the original draft for a long time. They got cut. Um, Dan Gansley was in there for a while. He got <laughs> cut twice. Um, what was the government experiment? He deserves to get cut twice. What was the government experiment Howdy Morning was involved with? I actually know the answer to that and can't say because it's a massive spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Um. Oops. Dude, oops. you suck. Thanks. Do the count? Do the countries in Epithet fight, or is there like general international peace? There's peace now. Um. Oh wow. This is like a. There's too many of you. There's 250 people here. This is like way more than I'm used to for a casual stream. Um. I think there's international peace right now. A couple years ago, um, there was at least one war, specifically because Phoenix's dad is involved in a war, and there is one other character who's <laughs> involved in a war. Oh my god. And I am not You'll cutting... know him if you only, see him. Only true fans know this character. Is Cowdy Morning's cat a guy or a girl? I picture I picture it's a boy cat. Though it's voiced that's also voiced by Stink. That's Marissa again. Someone uh someone asked how much Giovanni changed between AC and Epithet erased. He basically not that didn't. Much. Not not very much. Um like his design changed. I think his design changed a lot, and I think, the, lot, and just... I think he's I think he's generally cooler and like less of a dumb teen. So the well, because we the... had the foresight to know what he's actually like instead of having spent, like three mill around sessions figuring out what Giovanni's deal is. I think the big difference between the original Giovanni and this one is that like he's very sure of him. I think he's equally dorky. Honestly, it's just that he's like mm -hmm. confident now instead of like yeah. This thing! No one make fun of me! Now it's just like, yeah, I like this thing, what are you gonna do about it? I'm awesome. Which, like, makes him really- I'll beat you up! Which, like, honestly makes him extremely cool. <laughs> He's just a cool guy. I win! Yeah. There's also less jo- it, It's- His- His go-to joke also like, used to refined. be- refined. He yeah, he's polished. he's more refined, and weirdly, he's less about baseball. That was typically the comedy, well, to just try and talk about baseball, but no Even one. I don't know about baseball, and no none of us did. Our periphery knew about baseball, so. So you would just say the name Babe Ruth, and then that was the joke, and then <laughs> bad things would happen. <laughs> Why do you love Mara when she's so her? Because Mara's great. Mara is... I don't know if it's... Mara's Lin fun! I don't know if it's Lindsay's performance as her, but, like, something about Mara is just inherently very likable, in my opinion. Even though she's pretty objectively a really bad person. Like, she's, she's very mean, she's extremely selfish, but, like, she's fun to watch. And in a different way than Zora is, where, like... 
Zora actually kind of, like... I'm not gonna say scares me, but, like, if I was in this universe, I'd be very scared to be around Zora. Whereas, like, Mera's kind of a joke. Like, she's bad it, It's at part of her presence, too. She's kind of... With Lindsay's performance, she kind of, like, wibble wobbles sometimes. Yeah. Like, like no, I'm not like that. And that's that's Baka. on purpose, because in the original version of the story, I'm a... I am, like... Whereas Will, Ramsey's actor, is notoriously good at being able to come up with, like, really cool and pre-prepared sounding one-liners on the spot. I am extraordinarily bad at it. So I'm actually not very good at playing villains off the cuff. And anytime I tried to be intimidating as Mara, I fucked it, it up so work. many times that it, like, to me, it just became part of her character where she was just bad at it. And would just be like, yeah, yeah saying something scary, it's not working. Fuck you. And, like, she'd give up. Um, just quick bullet point. The reason why Will's so good at that is because he thinks of those while he's at work and then he holds on to them until the game happens. <laughs> no, but even, like, even in, like, uh, Aram Payne, we just got this big reveal, which, uh, which for people who don't know what the fuck we're talking about is that's that's a offline game you can't watch that uh, Percy's original player runs for us, and um, we got like a reveal. It's like a Persona Five kind of adventure where you've got a bunch of confidants and one of them is trying to kill us, and we just figured out who it was, and just immediately. Like, Will did, like, five or six really good movie one-liners at them based on their backstory and killed them. So I suppose it's, it wouldn't surprise me if Will was like, yeah. No, I just assumed that any of them could be the murderer and spend an hour sitting down and writing all of these ideas out. But I think, honestly, he's just really talented when it comes to that. It can be both. It can be both. So this isn't a question, but like I like how it looks like Zora's gun is coming out of Howie's head. I'm gonna be real, I don't know what's up with that. I might edit that out, because it looks very strange, and that's not It does it look exceptionally strange. I like work so much I added a smokestack from a factory to my hat. Where can I find the recordings of the AC streams? You can't. Not. You you we can't purged them. They are all spoilers. I you guys gotta trust me, and you two can back me up. They are so bad. Like anime the, camping yeah. sucks, it's dude. It's really, it really not good. I keep trying to tell you all it sucks. So Lamp, believe me, please. Lamp over on Surprise Round RPG manages like a bunch of different. Like you're the you're the head of that channel, and there's a bunch of different ongoing stream shows. An anime campaign was the first. And it really feels like the first in a bad way. It got good after like a year, but that means yeah. that like the first, the, the first, first like two especially were like pretty unbearable. And like I was literally going through because I was like, "Well, we should re-upload the like now that the first season's done, we can re-upload the um, what do you call it? Uh, the first adventure, which is the cowboy adventure." And I was literally sitting through it. And I was like, okay, this will be fun. I'll, like, originally there was like a well, like the well joke is directly lifted from the original. So I'll, I'll grab that and this will be fun. I can show where the, like the jokes originally stem from. And as I was doing it, I was just like, this is so, like, it's worse than I remembered even. Like, the audio quality is beyond unsalvageable. The maps are all bad. The GMing is really bad. Um, all of us have players, as players, have gotten way better. Like, just nothing about it is good. And as anime campaign goes on, uh, I'm changing, like, if we get more, I'm changing a lot of plot elements very significantly, but there are, like, some spoilers that are still very much going to be literal season-ruining spoilers for Epithet. And I don't want people to be able to go, I really liked Epithet Erased. What, what's this based on? Oh, look at this. And then watch it and get literally the worst possible way you could experience that story. It sucks. And 
I, I know of people who have done that, so yeah. like, and people who have been spoiled just from looking up a character on Google Images. Yeah. So like, and it's it's bad. I um, what do you? What was I gonna say? Fucking. It's a product of most of us being inexperienced with the medium. Yep. And there's still that nostalgia factor, and it isn't like. Like it's like I won't say we're the we were the worst role players ever, but like it shows. It shows it's old. Yeah, hard. Like we've always had our we've always had our like good group chemistry and like that's there, but like our stream quality didn't exist, which is something that fills me with deep shame. I I've seen some people have been like, oh that's unf that would be like when the Harry Potter movies started coming out, making it so people couldn't buy the books and like no it wouldn't. It's like. The books the, were written. The best the best comparison I can think of offhand is Pixar when they famously when they started sat down and had this big meeting between all of their like executives and their like creative thinkers and were like what are all our ideas for movies and they seriously sat down and came up with every movie pitch from Toy Story through Wall-E. Um which is to say all of their objectively good movies before they started doing sequels and while I understand that there's some interest in seeing that, like seeing that meeting, it's also not like a finished production and there will eventually be finished production. So I wouldn't want to sit through that meeting as opposed to waiting for the movie to come out because it's not like, it's not like, oh, it's like a slightly different version that's getting adapted. It's like literally an improvised rough guess at what we're going to make, hopefully. So, just people, people just gotta trust me that you don't want to watch it. Um, there's also, it's one of the dudes who directs um, Marvel movies. I, th I think his name is like Taika Watiki or something. Uh, he has this tweet that I love where someone's just like, Man, I looked at this new trailer for this movie, and I don't think it's gonna be good. And he just goes, now, now. Like, there, there. Uh, that's just because you don't know what you want until I give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an extremely powerful tweet, and one that I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just trust me, please. Someone asked who your favorite character in Apathet Erased is. It's Fenica. It's Molly, actually. I, I oh, mean, is it? I mean, Feeny's not a character. Fenica isn't a character yet. Like, I have a huge soft spot for Yumta and Feeny. They're my, they're my pet characters, but like... They aren't characters in Epithet yet. Uh, I, I love Molly. I, I really like Molly. Molly is really excellent. She mm. She's also the character I was most worried about because the way Danny play- Oh yeah, uh, you know who is also way the fuck worse in the original anime campaign is Molly. Because it's me playing her, trying to do a little girl voice and failing miserably. <laughs> Um, shoutouts to when shouts to when Molly and her sister are in the same scene and you can't tell who's talking. Yeah. Especially since their names were Molly and Millie, so you just kinda You just kinda you, were like, which one is being bitchier right now? Ah, uh, that's I, Millie. You just gotta <laughs> trust me, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love Molly's dumb hair stars. Do the eye do the eye designs mean anything significant? Nah, they're just neat. Uh, Molly's eyes are modeled after button eyes. But she... it's not like a ooh tragic backstory. Nah, it's it's just anything. a stylization thing. Sometimes characters have epithets that make you want to do something neat with their eyes. Like there's yeah. a few of those. My um. My, in in my head, the stronger your epithet is, the more it kind of involuntarily appears on your body, which is why I have a drawing of little Zora, which I'll grab because I've shared it elsewhere. Um, which like this scene's not going to exist in Epithet Erased either. Though I have to say, I did like playing little Zora. <laughs> <laughs> um, do 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 do. Where is she? Tiny. Oh, yep, that's where I wanted to put her, thanks. Just hidden behind Big Zora. Um, so Little Zora... Little secret. Little Zora does not have her eye tattoos, because as she got better with her epithet, they just kind of naturally spawned. And I imagine this, the more, like, 
experienced you are with your epithet, the more your eyes get fucked up. Um, we only did it once, and I kind of wish we found a better way to integrate it, but Mara's eyes flash one time with a mirror cataract. Uh, oh, actually, uh, I did this on purpose, too. I should have mentioned this. This is, like, subtle enough that nobody's caught it. Uh, when Mara is a little baby in episode four, her eye doesn't have the shatter mark in it, like the fissure. Uh, and it, ah. it does when she's old, and there's a specific reason for that. Like, there was an exact moment she got that fissure. Um, it'll probably never come up, but, like, it happened, and I know it exists, so... That is subtle. By the way, doing commentary, very hard. Like, I thought it would be easier, since I could literally talk for nine hours straight about all the shit that happened in production, but when it's, like, running in front of you, you're like, Oh, which of those things do I talk about? I know, nothing. Wait! <laughs> Wait, something! Uh, I miss mess. your secrets. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right, that's that's way more important than addressing a question. Yeah, man, no, ear that's secrets. Way more important. <laughs> yeah, uh, I drew all the original portraits, and a lot of characters had what were called ear secrets. <laughs> because uh, stemming from, I believe Guile was the first one, so here's him. Uh, this is another. Whoa, whoa. What the fuck? Why are you hidden inside of Molly? That's really strange. All right, whatever. Uh, but his ability, his power set was based around being a fucking liar. So I just wrote the word lie in his ear and literally pointed to it with arrows in his hair. Um, <laughs> but I, and because of that, I was Rip like, Guile, this is just he lives on in one Giovanni line. He sure does. Yeah, he started the sequence, and then other characters got ear secrets. I don't think any characters who appear in this season ever had any ear secrets, though. I don't think so. Yeah. There were a pretty I... good number of ear secrets, but none from this crowd. No, that's not right. Was there a question? Sierra Saxton had an ear secret. I, I love Sierra don't Saxton. Don't speak of her. If, man, there are some characters I'm excited to cast. I am not cutting Sierra Saxton. She's so stupid. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, some... if I can get away with it, I'm not even going to change her. <laughs> okay. I don't think you can get away with that is the thing. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, someone asked if there's going to be any completely original characters in Epithet Erased who were in an anime campaign. Considering the, the amount the of anime original. campaign characters They're that are fighting. getting cut. <laughs> Big thing. The cut characters are fighting to get a spot. There, There is one. There is exactly one I have an idea for, and he, that character might end up becoming Mystery Tuxedo, who kind <laughs> of counts. Uh... I think everybody else appeared in some capacity. I do love Mystery Tuxedo. Mystery Tuxedo is, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest loss from losing that one game. That was... Yeah. That game was really fun. Oh, that's the other thing about, like, oh, can we see anime campaign? Like, literally, even if I wanted you to, the answer is no. We're missing some of the episodes. <laughs> That, like, episode zero isn't good, but it is gone and characters reference it forever. Yeah, like, there there was, like, a plot summary we did once of it, but, like, again, shrug. You can't see it all properly. Fun fact, though, we did stream that, and uh, that was before Jello advertised that he was running games, so no one showed up. Like uh, five people exactly. There showed were like up? there were like five people who showed up. One of whom is uh, one of whom is a friend of mine, and that is also the only stream he has ever seen. <laughs> oh my god! No wonder he gave up. He's got after the that. gold star. He's got like, he's got the very rare dev kit uh, item in an, like an MMO, and only he. But has doesn't it. play the MMO. And like he didn't even know. He didn't even know it was gone. 
Like, he mentioned it in passing, just like, maybe I'll watch that again sometime, and he just <laughs> can't. Good. It's bad. It is bad. Is Martin going to be a big part of E? I don't implying know yet. How? Okay, uh, this one I have gotten. Uh, also, if you're gonna ask a question, go ahead and I guess Lamp can't see see it when you at me. Uh, here. Yeah, no. If you wanna, if you wanna so at have the someone, word question either. beforehand so we can pick it out easier. So like, yeah, yeah. or at me or me or Lamp. I'll just so like this. Um. Yeah, or that. That works. Uh, so, how do we audition for an epithet erased role? Short answer, you can't. Um, I am not doing these auditions publicly. Uh, I'm doing them through Sound Cadence, since they're a, profes a professional casting studio. So you would have to live in Dallas, be a, a voice actor with a demo reel and such, and be good and then get a part if we hypothetically ever actually got another season. So quite a lot of ifs there. Um, the original kind of players didn't get Shawnee to audition. Johnny be cut, there's a poster. There you go. <laughs> what did you say? Will negative plan Johnny be cut? He has a poster. I mean, yeah, that's, he exists. As, that's as in it as he's gonna be. Someone asked if Howie owns a bee fursuit, which is a really funny question. He does. Um, I don't think he doesn't. In the re the reason he had that is because I think it's so hard to know. Nothing about AC4's like setup or end made any sense. <laughs> Anime campaign was so bad. The ending of that was <laughs> literally just Yumta picking up the entire cast in a giant ball and going. This adventure is over. I'm throwing you Yeet. in a dungeon. And then like some of the people she picked up weren't in the dungeon. Like they just got away off screen because it was just <laughs> like, well, they're not players. So I guess she dropped them. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I think the reason that how he had that bee suit is because Molly brought him there as like a, you need to take a break. And she turned around and then turned back around, and he was in a bee suit and went, I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> to my memory, that is what happened. It might not even have had that much set up. That was the, me in my head, that is what happened. Did it actually happen? Who can say? AC4 was the worst episode? False. No AC fighting, it's dead. Stop no. kicking the corpse. I... No, I have so much stock in AC4. It's the best. <laughs> I'm... It's weird, because I... I don't think it's a good tabletop game, but I thought AC4 was honestly pretty good TV. Like, I don't think our players had fun at all. So in that aspect, we failed, because it was very hectic. And dude, we literally had one day. There was actually one day for three months that we could play that game. Either By that the way, or if you to... ever want to run games, scheduling nightmares happen. Yeah. And this was a fucking scheduling nightmare. Every anime campaign was run in like one five to eight hour session because trying to do more than one session with everybody was just fun. It literally wasn't an option. That's because we were all in college back then. So, I mean, like most, like anyone who went to college was in college. So we all had very strict schedules. And there were just some people you could not schedule together, period. I distinctly remember Chula being the difficult one that time because she had a, like a bonkers stupid job and couldn't uh, get her own times or something. And then at the very end of it, she was like, I'm going to a convention, but one day before the convention on 9-11, I remember, uh, I, I have a day available. So we did that day. Why doesn't Percy regain stamina after fighting the Bonsai Blasters? She didn't win. 
Yeah, it wasn't a fight. It was zapping NPCs mean. with a lightning bolt. Yeah, I, uh... That is my, like... Yeah, that that makes sense. That's the answer. The, the real answer is because, like, I wrote it the other way and was lazy. Like, that happens sometimes. There's a lot to consider when adapting this shit, and if I gotta cheat it sometimes, then, well... It happens. It's fine. It wasn't a real fight is a good enough answer that yeah, it might, that it holds might as up well be. in the universe. No, no, gotta be radial. Wow, if that's you did miss information about a new season in the recordings of anime campaign. There isn't one, and there isn't one. Yeah, until, like, look, if I get the confirmation, I will tell everybody. It It's kind of Jello like... Jello will be screaming from the hilltops. It's pretty nuts to me that people, like, think I'm... I've seen people who think I'm, like, withholding a secret second season. Like, no, man, we barely managed to finish that first one. I was sick for a month afterwards. If Jello got a second season, he would not shut the hell up about it. When have I ever kept a secret about anything? <laughs> the most that has been done for season two is thinking about it so that if it does happen, it doesn't punch us in the side of the face. I, I have a skeleton plot structure. The I don't even know how long each of these episodes skeleton are. Skeleton plot? I'd... Ideally, I'd like it to be nine episodes. The first... Two or three are gonna be set in the toy store and Molly and Giovanni are gonna be the protagonists again. Uh, and then the, oh no, sorry. The very first episode is going to be an introduction to all of the, uh, to Molly's two friends and the guy they found on the beach. Then after that is two or three episodes of them in the toy store with Molly and Giovanni. Then uh, it's going to be a party split, always fun, with um, two pairs of main characters, which is Molly and Giovanni and Trixie and Feeny. With other special guests! Ooh. There are other special mm -hmm. guests. The, uh... With special guest Moppet. The quote villains of that season... I mean, I don't know why I say quote. They're the, they're the bad guys. The villains of that, of season two, are going to be... Yumta and the character with uh, sunglasses, who is in the last shot. The so I'm like, I know it looks like I'm sitting here doing nothing, but I'm considering doing some coloring. It things. does look like that. Yes. Fun fact: I named all of the all of Giovanni's bonsai blasters. You did. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Ripped a blade who died in a tragic accident. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> he lost one of his boys. I my no, it's just I sent a bunch of names and Blade was the one that didn't make the cut. I mean, we had to have Ben. We had to have Ben. Like, it was just necessary that we had Ben. Great at crime. That's a good track. Actually, hold on, Rub Rubus. Did you did yeah. you did you put in Dark Star? Yes. Because because I because yes. that's because that's me. That's, yes, that's I know. My... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did that on purpose, <laughs> there, buddy. I did it okay, for you. Know. Blue or black? I think blue. Why'd you never fucking split... say something about well, not that? Not explicitly for you. <laughs> I just was like, I'm I did it for me. Edgy. I did it for me. Oh, that was cool too. I, uh, <laughs> I didn't do it explicitly for you, but, like, when I was asked for edgy names Giovanni would give me, <laughs> it's just something that came up I in my head. for you, but, like, you know, edgy I names. thought of you. <laughs> no, Lamp agrees. In fairness, that was literally the exact thought process that, uh, that got me that. Because uh, cause Darkstar is just like the default like last name I use for things if I need one or if I need to name a guild or something. And the thought process was literally, what is the worst name, the, the worst generic terrible name I can use? And then I used it unironically forever. And here we are. And then here we are. 
and no one asked a question about that. Um, let's see. How he had an epithet, what would it be? Work. Job. Yeah. I don't know why, but I was just gonna say fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that doesn't make sense. Where did this go? Favorite joke slash gag from season one? Um, I... I am very amused by all the coupon jokes, specifically, <laughs> specifically, um, no, you can't scan the barcode if it's gold! No, they're worthless! <laughs> yeah, Arnold Markdown got bullied really hard. He's a bad dude, he deserves it. Jilla worked hard on those subtitles, and some of them are golden, like, you know, the normal SFX when throwing up ducks. Am I having an aneurysm? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, that, that, that was the most like anime campaign that Epithet Erased was, I think, was that whole scene in the I, bar. I mentioned this in the commentary tracks, which are available on my Patreon. Uh, episode 3's commentary track is free. Um that uh fucking oh, god damn it what was it oh uh i really like writing fights in epithet erase because they're not like they're so dumb that they're all stream of consciousness is how i write fights and i genuinely wrote all the shit with howdy morning firing soup from his gun just because that that's what it started out as in the original and he never actually fired it so I was like, all right, this time we'll fire it. And here's some soup jokes. And I was like, okay, now what happens next? And I remember Giovanni had just been like sitting silently in a corner. I was like, wait a minute, Giovanni's epithet is soup. And I was like, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was totally an accident. And then you got to have Ramsey be like, why are you still here? Yeah, no, <laughs> there are a lot of Ramsey lines that I would just go like, Will, what would he say here? And Will would just react naturally, and I'd be like, perfect, that's the dialogue. Hmm. I don't know which one I like better there. It's starting to look pretty cinematic, though. That's cool. Ooh, that Stephen. one's pretty good, too. To I think I can only do one or the other. Question, are Indus and Mara just gone now? No. No. That would be a real waste of them. That'd be that? a waste of them. Mara and Indus are like so good. Yeah, no. Uh, I I have an arc planned for them. Oh, Rhea, what is this? You know, that's not how we color Indus's tattoos. To jail. Oh yeah, Rhea, go to jail. <laughs> They're in jail. In case anyone's wondering why, uh, why we continue calling Ramsey a gerbil in uh, in Apathet Erased, it's because he really looked like a gerbil. Man, like his OG icon was really gerbil esque. Even even I didn't fucking know why you guys were doing that because here's what the icon looks like, and like I I get it, I see it now because you guys saw his face as like I don't know where can I draw this. You guys saw his face as like buck teeth, like a fucking like fucking howdy from Hamtaro over here. <laughs> yeah. As I I meant to draw it as just this like shitty like ye grin where like it's just it's just open like a normal dude. And I I see why, but uh, it, it's how like curved the edges are. I think. Yeah. Cause it goes more like three face instead of like smirk. Yeah. Okay. What a uh, green. Why is it green? I don't. I don't think I have any green backgrounds to work off of. Um. Let's let's find one. Digging through my old backgrounds. Kinda green. That's kinda green. Anything else? No, those are my options. Awesome. Alright. See what I can fucking do. Does this fucking do? Any other questions? 
Hold on, I'm getting a cough drop, and we'll have to master the art of talking with a cough drop in my mouth. Will we ever get to know what happens to Ramsey's eye? Maybe. I I don't. I'll it's not honest. very important in the grand scheme. Honestly, I don't know what it is because um, our friend Nico drew a fan backstory comic, which could be the canonical thing. Uh, Will and I came up with a Ramsey backstory in anime campaign that I don't know if I still want to be true. So, I, I don't know. We're working on it. I'd say probably not, offhand. This might be your big break. <sighs> Rhea, come on. Gotta fill this white shit in with actual white. How will how will the worst joke in anime campaign be translated into epithet erased? It probably won't. There uh, are you talking about like, Don Infusio? Yeah, no. Yeah, of like Don Infusio he is so hard to he translate. Work it's like, no, he not at all. Work, yeah. The entire joke was roll twenty sucks, and we're not on roll twenty anymore. Not well, to be too brazen we about it, World 20 doesn't suck. It's a great, it's a great website, but their search feature leaves a little bit to be desired. For, like, for like a free service or a mostly free service, it's like honestly very good. Yeah. yeah. And outside of musical bullshit, it's gotten better, but like, yeah. Man, but if I, you uh... still search the word camera, you still get what you get. Spoilers, it's a Nazi flag. And uh, in fair, I don't think it was this at the time, but a camera does come up now. It even comes up first. I don't believe you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I made the, um, I made the game page for Sweetwater the other day and just tried uploading one song off of YouTube and had just an immeasurable amount of problems with it, so I'm not looking forward to getting over that hump. This one's gonna be really tricky. What color would make both Mara, Indus, and Sylvie pop? None? We don't use Roll20 anymore. What do we use? We still use Roll20. Yeah, we, we use, use the alternative is Map Tool, and Map Tool is garbage. Map Tool is way worse. I cannot fathom how some other people swear by Map Tool. You can say Jay. It's okay. I don't. I didn't want to call Jay. out Jay. I like Jay. Jay doesn't really. He likes aspects of Map Tool, but like he's like, no, it's fine. It's just that this update irre like irreversibly destroyed. 400 Everything. hours of my game and it's the new version so now it's broken forever and it's like so stop using map tool and he's like no <laughs> my boyfriend I can make fun of him <laughs> that's kind of cool looking in like a weird ugly sort of way I think I might just have to change this base color Let's that's make... great in a bad way Let's make this. Do many core words still exist in Epithet Erased? No. Like, technically, no. Core words don't even exist in anime campaign. I, I'm i like, wowed that I still see people talking about them. Like, even I had never mentioned them since, like, fucking... Adventure, like, 3, even. Like, they, they were not a thing. Why are you making this hard? Come on. Will I be voicing any of her characters? I might be voicing someone else's character. Depends. I'd certainly I, I'd be happy to get in there at all. Yeah, if if absolutely nothing else, like if if someone happens to audition because I, I send the audition packet out to the original players, like Aram and Majin audition for Giovanni. Um Oh my god. Aram sure Aram's did. Audition. God. Um He was he was not destined for it because he knew what my Giovanni sounded like. So yeah, he was no. trying to emulate that and that just was not a good decision. That's but God bless him. That's but God bless him. Kinda neat looking. Bless his soul. 
Bless his soul. If I can like add like a darker orange, then that might work. I like that it leads into that Giovanni, but eh, I don't, I don't think. A great tool or site for making maps. Roll twenty. I mean, like as much as we bank can. Like, yeah, as we much as we as it. much as we piss on it, like Roll Twenty is a good service. Like, and as far as I'm concerned, there's not a good alternative. Like, like some people, some people are like Dungeon Painter's good, and they're wrong. But from what I understand, Dungeon Painter Dungeon costs Painter, money. It costs money, and it's good for like like painting floors. Like you can do some cool shit with floor textures if you've got really big maps. From what I understand, that's mm -hmm. kind of the draw, and that's it. I wouldn't even give it that much praise. I really hate Map Tool. I've used uh, Photoshop a little bit for some stuff, but you kind of have to. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't imagine trying to make maps without Photoshop backing me up. Holy shit! Yeah, here's more campaign advice. If you want to run something in like a, in like Roll Twenty. Learn how to use a, an image editing program of some kind, because Roll20 will fail you at some point. And so just use the power of Google searching a word, and then finding a picture of that word. Like, there is, most of the time you can't find what you're looking for, but like, there is stuff that you can get top-down views of. Mm-hmm. Like, I made a bouncy castle asset that has been proven useful. Yeah, you can also find, like, an infinite picture of top-down view cars. Anything anything that would be interesting to look at from the top-down, people tend to take photos of it like that, and anything that's not, they don't. Like, if you want a jukebox, sorry, buddy. Learn how to make that yourself, because no one's taking a top-down view photo of a jukebox. Okay. Odd. All right. Mm, who do I go to next? Sorry, uh, you were saying something, Joel, and you didn't finish the thought. You send oh, the packet out to like. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I I send the packet out to everyone who played originally, because like about half of us were like at some point internet voice actors. Like, I'm gonna say like five of the people who made anime campaign were in that like, yeah, I'm getting into voice acting boom that happened when Homestuck had a million dubs. <laughs> um, like, seriously, me and Plaster and Chula as well. Um, and uh, so at least, like everyone pretty much has at least some acting experience. Um, so I send them all the packet, but in the event that Lamp does not land anyone, including her original characters, I want to have a... There's a lot going on in Season 3, and it's going to be at a convention. And if no one el if Lamp doesn't get any other roles, I'm going to give her the role of attention anime death con person who is <laughs> over the announcer and acts kind of like the... There's an announcement every time the scene changes, basically. Uh, like, just as, like, this universal transition of, like, okay, we're moving along, and then, like, while while it's moving through the building, you fucking hear a stupid announcement, like, someone's peed in the ball pit. Thank you for choosing Anime Death Con, or whatever. So I will get yeah. you in there. I was so fucking mad when I went to Anime Boston that time. You were so mad. I was so fucking you were angry. I fucking rate. I was, I was goddamn furious at the incompetence of the of the non pre registration line. Your context, like three hundred and seventy people who don't know what I'm fucking talking about, is that that uh that announcer bit was a bit I was doing to keep myself sane when I was standing in line at Anime Boston for like an unreasonably long time, like two hours or more, something something really yeah, me unacceptable. And, me and, so me, Lamp, and our friend Ryan all went to that, and me and Ryan were pre-registered, so we got through the lines like 20 minutes tops. Lamp was in those lines for two hours. And I couldn't even tell them to go on without me because every phone is the devil and it didn't want me to. So... 
I had to entertain myself in line, and the way that I was doing it was by having a sinister man appear over the intercom and give horrible line-related announcements. My favorite of which being, uh, Attention Anime Boston, we have released a wild panther in the, into the line just to see what happens. Thank you for choosing Anime Boston. My favorite one that I remember us doing, because we continued that bit for a while. This isn't on the line layer, right? Okay, thank God. Um, was... Uh, Attention Anime Boston. We are putting out a bounty for anyone cosplaying Shobu from Duel Master. <laughs> if you find and kill a Shobu, your position in line will increase by two. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Anime Boston. And then a little while later, Attention Anime Boston. The Shobu cosplayer has been neutralized. Congratulations on your reward two spaces earlier in line. Unfortunately, to kill him, you left the line, meaning that your space is now two from the end of the line. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Anime <laughs> Boston. Oh, I do. I remember another one that I liked, which was uh, we we won't do this forever. I'll cut us off after this, but uh, attention, Anime Boston. You may have noticed that the line is not moving forward. This is because of our staff's mandatory ping pong tournament. <laughs> <laughs> what really makes that is the just the delivery on ping pong. <laughs> ping pong. Ugh. I was irate. Alright, you're trying really hard to get this question acknowledged. Jello, what's what's the most interesting piece of fan art you've seen? I collectively really like everything that um Oh god, what's their name? I think it's like Sprinkles with two eyes. Sprinkles, I think. Sprinkles. Uh anything in that one AU uh swap AU where Molly is the older bonsai blaster and Giovanni is uh a little Oh guy. yeah. I, I love yeah, every piece of art. It in is there. sprinkles. I, it's I very lied. good. <laughs> um, also a huge yeah. fan. There's a there's a Beetlejuice musical animatic called Beetle Soup. I am a huge sucker for uh, fan animatics. I think they are legitimately the highest compliment you can receive as a I creator. know, right? Uh, and they are the only best only being trumped by an actual animation, which we did get one of those. We did get one of those. I named episode six after it. We love everything we get. What the fuck we was that? We love everything sex. we get except Molly Ludes. Don't do those. Yeah, don't. There is a don't. significantly non-zero number of those. Some of which and have been sent gross. to me as though I want to see them. I do not and will block you. I would, I, I'd report you, but it would never matter. It never matters. Say what you want about, uh, say what you want about Reddit as a whole, but like everyone on the epithet of raised Reddit is on the exact same page of me making memes about how they hate. Yeah. Solidarity. Yeah, so we love. All the fan art except for that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, you know that we are judging you and hating you. And hating you. you. I... Man, I don't know. Like, I put, like, in a series that Zora and Mera are in, why would you lewd the child? Especially when Mera Zora is there. Mera is right there. There's pretty ladies, and like, if you want a dumpster husband, I guess you can have Ramsey. People like Ramsey. I mean, Ramsey and Gia. For like, Boris, there's Indus, like. And Howie, if you there want. There are options. I, and Howie, to an I extent, have, yeah. I have straight up seen. Wait, let me count. I have seen more lewds of Bugsy than I have of Mara. And they're, all, <laughs> they're, all, they're, all, they're all from one dude, but like that doesn't change the fact that one dude likes, like, wants to fuck Bugsy Pugsler more than the rest of the internet wants to fuck Mara Solomon. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. 
Because I saw, I saw the first one and I was like, well, huh, I guess there really is someone for everyone. And then I saw more and I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Like, guy, follow guy. your heart and bugs who's an adult, so like, whatever, but like, it's weird, the numbers that we get on them. <laughs> oh, I'm listening to Plaster's old horror soundtrack from a creepypasta. Let me restart the epithet playlist. Bum, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum. I'm gonna go ahead and... Ch I'm gonna reshade Sora's eyes. Deadline, please. Thank you. Wake up, you've got a lot to do today. Feel proud and wipe your eyes. Uh, which one's for shape? Here we go. If Bugsy and Arnold earned a promotion, which one would be promoted? Arnold, probably. Yeah, my gut says Arnold. Oh, like, Ooh. my gut says Arnold here. That's actually very cool looking. Let me just keep it like that. Yeah, that's neat. That is neat. No, I like this better. All right. Thanks. Accident. Accidentish. Okay. Um. Yeah. I actually don't think I need to change Percy and Ramsey at all. They're fine. Though I do need to fill in. None of the white on them is actually white. It's just empty. <laughs> Calling you out, Rhea. Bad job. Lies. I can't say bad job since she she did this like took her like bunch of time to do this, but still. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, no, which one's the background? The background. What are your thoughts on fan stories and role play plots? They're like, gonna happen! It's like, fan content. go! Have I fun! Am, I am neutral to them and do not interact with them. That's, that's all I got. That's all you can expect. By, by the very nature of having a character being written not by the people who made them, there are going to be some discrepancies, and that always bugs me, so I just don't look at it. Personally, I really like fan content, especially, uh, especially writing, because it's really hard to capture someone else's voice, and some people can do it really well, and I like that. It's true. Mm. I mostly like art. Incel Eben Ward with less than 20 fan fictions versus Chad Epithet Erased with like over 120. Eben Ward has the most out of all of ours. <laughs> Cries. Cries. That's like very wild to me. I. It's weird because I like writing, but I. I don't know. I, I, I'm unable to put myself into the mindset of someone's like, I'm going to write some stuff. I'm going to like continue a thing I like from someone else's existing work, or I'm going to fix something I hate in an existing work. And like, I've never, I've never felt that way. Like, that's not what makes me want to write stuff, I guess. Just different yeah. uh, it's inspirations, it's I like, suppose. It's just like strange to me. Every character is also on the same color layer, which is really annoying. You gotta rip them all apart. I love Rhea's crush on Ramsey. It's so funny. Pet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I realized, like, I think midway through production, I was like, man, I just realized if, if Ramsey... Oh, shit. If Ramsey were a girl, he'd absolutely be a Jello girl, because I really love that flavor of like garbage, and you don't see mm -hmm. it as female characters a lot. But you get a, like you get just enough of them that as as guys. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Man, I don't care. Okay. Fuck it. All right, what is what is this shit? Why is that on the background? Get out of here. Okay. I don't know how. I'm surprise, surprise Ramsey. Ramsey. We wish I had more fan fiction. Blades Any dark. of them. Oh, yeah, Blades. Blades in the Dark, man. I, I feel like there's so much potential there that is not being 
taken up on. But like any, if you have inspiration for any, please do. I'm begging. Hands shameless, on my knees. Shameless self promotion. Go check out twitch.tv ports on Sprout on RPG. Tell your friends. Oh yeah. Please also, uh, you know who is running a game right now and. I'm probably siphoning more viewers than I'd like to from it. This is my buddy Eternal Savvy, who is running an anime campaign. I don't know. He how, is doing that. I don't know how it's how it's going. I hope it's going good. Here, there's a link to him. You can go watch him. Um, Role guys, playing this, is happening over there. Is this the second episode? God, Savvy's had so much going on. He hasn't been able to do this in a while. Um, I think it's also just a scheduling nightmare. Yeah. Shocker. Shocker. I like that, uh, you know what's funny is I did the original anime campaigns in their stupid, dumb, long format out of necessity because we needed to, but, um, I, I legitimately did not realize that the ability to just go and go and go for that kind of game is not something everyone, like, not only is it not something everyone has, it's something nobody has except me. <laughs> like, I was just okay with that. I was just like, yeah, I could do this forever as the only way I play TTRPGs. I mean, at the time, I was I was much the yeah, same. Yeah, at the like, time, I was, yeah. Like Retrospect says, like, holy fuck, how do we do that? I think it was because it was like not every week or some shit. Yeah, that's like some of our I other guess that's stuff. The other it thing. was like, a, hey, here's the date. We're doing anime campaign. Prep yourself for this entire day to be down the toilet. Yeah, and then it was. In and fairness, was. I also uh, like then and now. Maybe this is why I'm still this way. I am not in any other games. Like, come on. Well, You're busy. Manually. I'm in not a, uh, no other streamed games. I'm in Starfinder, but that's been on hold for eons because uh, Aram Payne runs at the same time. Hmm. And Aram Payne has been taking forever. It's good though. Um. Okay. Now we got that. I did label this right. It's under Molly. Yeah. Good. Okay. Arch layers. Yeah. That'll... If we're gonna run a campaign with the fans, go to Austin and pay him money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Austin could use money. <laughs> That's the closest you'll get. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry yeah. to say. I will never do that. No offense to you guys, but running games with people you don't know is pretty awkward. It is. It is insane to me. In hellish. That anybody in the world does it um a, a lot of people do a lot of a people lot. do that at conventions yeah, which, no, what the that's, fuck civ did that at a convention recently and had a good time and that's wild to me i like like i'm very hoity toity is the wrong word i'm very like oh you have to be good enough for me but like even beyond that because i've done a lot of improv Doing improv with people you've never even practiced with before hard. is like a fucking it's disaster. Hard. And doing tabletop with people is like nothing but improv and like a lot more elements. Trust in a way. So there's a there, there's a great analogy that I that I read once, which is uh, don't play D and D with anyone you wouldn't want to be in a three hour long car ride with, and. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to do that with strangers. I would not. It could be really Like, you fun. ever been in a car ride with a stranger? It's awkward! It's you weird! You ever been in a car ride with, like, your family members that you don't see in, like, forever? Yeah. That's awkward, let alone with a bunch of strangers. Yeah, and, like, it could definitely be fun, but I am, I am never going to gamble on that, ever. Um... I also, I don't really, like, this right now is the most direct engagement I ever do with fans, because, um, I have been kick, kick uh-oh, uh hang on, where did color most go? Most direct engagement you do is having someone else read questions from chat for you. Yes, filter them for me, no, it's because I'm drawing. I, um, <laughs> I have been around the internet long enough 
that I have learned this lesson over and over again. Every time I try and be inclusive and nice, I am taught again that it's the wrong move. Uh, like, I've tried so many fan discords, I've tried to engage, and I've just had a terrible time every single time. I just don't like people. I, like, I like one in 10,000 people, and most of them are in a small Discord server we hang out with. Uh, so it's possible I might like you, but I, I'm not gambling those dice. I've been burned too many times. Been doing this shit for eight years. <sighs> Even at conventions, it's like very... I don't know. Like, I, like I'm obviously nice to people at conventions, but it's, it's kind of that fake, like, I'm working a desk, like, I'm working as a clerk in, like, a, a restaurant kind of nice. Because, like, you know, they paid to see you, and you want to be, you want to be nice. But sometimes people are weird. Someone at the last convention I was at just walked up to me and gave me, like, pizza game porn they'd drawn, and I'd be like, oh, thank you! Oh, wow, thanks! Someone drew pizza game porn? <laughs> Don't say it with such an eyes emoji in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just such a niche, you know? DM, you got that? No, I threw it away immediately. <laughs> hey, uh, OP source. There... By the way, Rube and I are in Pizza Game by Pizza Game. There... There's gotta be... I know I've seen other pizza game porn. I'm pretty sure. So it's <laughs> like thinking. Maybe I haven't. I would Don't worry about it. I would hazard a guess. I think Lamp might be the most popular character in pizza game, actually. Yeah, <laughs> ah, I, Master I, of I Twisted. Think it's like Lamp, and I think I think Aram. Yeah, people like Aram's the most prevalent character. So you see a lot mm -hmm. of him. Whether you want to or not, printer Ooh. boy. Who makes all the apathet erased music? Plaster. Plaster break. Go buy pizza game. Buy Go Plaster. buy pizza game. She's my sister. Yeah, no, if you want to support her. By the way, we've been trying to put the pizza game, or no, uh, the pizza game soundtrack is available, I think. Uh, we've been trying to put the apathet erased soundtrack on like, Spotify and it's just like not going. It's it's very difficult to actually get your soundtrack get up shit on Spotify. somewhere. So you can listen to it on SoundCloud, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> Plaster is the only person I have not paid a dime to yet for uh, Epithet Erase production, which he's not happy about. I just haven't had the money yet. I'm hopefully getting it at the end of March. Huh, interesting. Okay. No one asked, but Jello, are you broke as shit? I am broke as <laughs> shit. Now I I still have like seven thousand dollars kicking around, so I'm I'm a lot less broke as shit than most people, but I sure started this year with like a hundred and forty thousand dollars in my bank. So it's a pretty significant knockdown. There was Last month, there was a point where I had $1,000, which is the poorest I have been since freshman year of high school. That's because I never buy anything, and I save all my money, but now I don't have any. Oops. Oops. I didn't actually do the math. I did taxes. I looked at my expenses. I spent $350,000 last year on stuff. Uh, most of it was epithet erased. I will probably never have that amount of money again. We'll see. Okay, let's do a color overlay here. What does Jello think of epithet erased? Does he s stop guessing the villains? <laughs> stop guessing future characters accidentally. Oh man, yeah, no, I, um... Fucking, I saw yesterday someone made an OC who had- Oh, a new one? <laughs> uh, who had- I can't even say this because enough people in the fan base follow this person that I can't say what it is. Uh, 
There Just type a... it in the guest chat, and then we can nod and react. Okay. <laughs> Right. And we can go, mm hmm, yes, yes, I understand. And then the chat will go, what is going on? Non interactivity. On? Die. We hate you. We don't hate you. Thanks for coming. We don't out. hate you. I'm there sorry. That was. <laughs> oh! Know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw that. So here's a here's a list of characters who have been like shockingly on the nose, accidentally predicted. Um, for just Ruben Lamp. Yay! Yay! <laughs> no, it's legit spoilers, guys. No, you literally can't see this. Um... But, like, the general idea is, like I see, they're fun to look at. The dumber the epithet, the closer it is to being an anime campaign or epithet erased, like, real. Yeah. I'm... Because, like, when I made Giovanni, I remember his three words very clearly. Beginner, Frost, and Soup. When you make OCs, pick the soup of your options. Yeah, I... I really appreciate the people who, like, kind of get it and go in for the dumb word. So whenever I see someone, it's like, my epithet is shadow. It's like, yeah, all right. I mean, like, that's like, yeah, no, it's a cool power. But then people are like, my epithet is like cummerbund. And it's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, you that's got fucking, it, cummerbund. That, that's useless. <laughs> I gotta make it work. You know, sometimes you wanna, but like other times, other times like fucking... <laughs> Soup has the greatest epithet luck, I swear to god. <laughs> He's played in a bunch of anime campaigns, like, he rolled the word- he, he rolled cheat. Like, that was a really good one and really well within character for him. And like, most recently he rolled god. And like, I know he's not cheating. Cause he didn't want god. He had to be convinced into being god. He rolled like 40 proficiency on God, too. It was dumb. It's wild to me that people still play anime campaign. It's like, it's fun enough. I, I'm i just the kind of person who like, once I do something, I'm done with it forever. It's just like, yep, I made that, goodbye. Oh, I mean, I can tell you why. It's because it's because my buddy Didi watched Epithet Erased and was like, I'm gonna do this in the wrong order. <laughs> As is partial for him. Why can I not fill this in? Yeah, I think a lot of people are doing it now because of EE, e., so I understand that. It's like the... It's like the renaissance for anime campaign games. The fuck? Oh. What? How, what? Okay, that's very odd. Sorry. It's the renaissance. Wink. Renee Sauce would be the name of a dumb epithet erase character. <laughs> so much time wasted filling in these white spots. It's still working on it somehow. Did you take a nice long break after you finished epithet erase? Pretty no. sure Jello instantly got sick. No, I got sick for a month, and uh, my voice and hands were out of commission. Uh, my hands are still healing. My voice is finally back to normal, though. It took three and a half weeks. It was extremely annoying. I did not really get a break. And uh, now I have video projects that have hard deadlines coming up in March and April, so I have to get working on them. I should actually be doing that today instead of this, but here I am. But this was important. It is not. <laughs> but I do want to get this done, because it has been on my to-do list for some time now. What? How is this still happening? I am just trying to duplicate this Percy so I can give her a blue overlay, and it's like so difficult for no fucking reason. Actually, you meant email gunning. Are there any other questions? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pushes inbox pile into a furnace. 
What word generator do you guys use for the characters? Just whatever comes up on Google. Yeah, I just search word generator. Uh, I try to change it up because a lot of them end up using the same words. Like, I I can tell which word generators people are using by the weird words they're getting. Yeah, same. I, uh, I can tell by the background of the word generator. I would also recommend... Um, I might recommend just grabbing a dictionary and, like... What the... What? Okay. What's going on? What? Sorry, just trying to... Shit is getting, like, moved over somehow, and it's driving me nuts. Like, how long have all these weird little outlines been there? What are these from? What layer is this? Raya... Where am I? Who am I? Okay, there we go. You got caught in that ambush. <laughs> Who are you? What epithet Ooh, would I fine. have? Uh, hold on, let me find out. <laughs> I rolled the other day, let me see if I can find it in my personal server. And it really wants me to be a feral, horrible little man. A feral, uh, let's horrible. see. I could have lace, guitar, or qualification. I think I'm gonna go with the third one. Oh Although yeah, lace the would be day. really cute. Lace would be cute. Uh, I have berserk, reckless, and enemy. <laughs> so like, you know. Oh, uh, it if you're really wants you to be feral. If you're planning on doing a anime campaign, here's a fun like. I don't know if you call this like a challenge mode, but uh, here's something I started doing because I got bored of the usual word generator thingies. Uh, Reroll until. Uh, and take the first word you've never heard of before. The or first just... word you have to look up the definition of. Yeah. I find weird words are more fun. In the original version of the story, Mara had, uh, she had already stolen two other epithets. Like, she basically got to take all three of the words she rolled. So, her main one was fragile. Uh, and then she took eventual, which kind of a stretch if you've ever seen uh, if you've ever seen One Piece in the Foxy arc, she has Foxy's power where she can like basically slow people down in the same way he does. Uh, and then is this one usually tattoo? I think it is. And then the last one was Bug House which is an archaic term for an, uh, uh, an insane asylum. So she could like generate big gross bugs that like only appeared to one person. That was about going off of the uh, Going off of the words you don't know metric, uh, I guess my epithet is ep ep epicalyx, which I, something to do with flowers. Oh, though I will say, uh, asterisk on that, you're generally going to want to uh, pass if it's a medical term. Because there are a lot of specific boring medical terms and, like, genuses of animals and shit that are not interesting. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's uh, grab these guys. Good, they're on, they're on the layer now. Eat this deer. <laughs> Excuse me, you, you dropped mean your the bag. Chaos emeralds? <laughs> you mean the chaos emeralds? <laughs> Giovanni voice, you mean the chaos emeralds? Okay. Are Mera and Spike aided, uh, related? No. Um. How do languages affect epithets? Okay, I get this question all the time. I'll just answer it. So, um, they don't. There is only one language in the epithet universe. It's it's just common. It, like, it's not English. It's not any other language. But, you know, just for the sake of media, that you can understand what they're saying. Um, and... In my brain, this will not come up in the series, but in my brain, the reason epithets exist is it is a magic thing that happens whenever 
Uh, everybody in the world, every every creature, everybody speaks the same language. Words have like more power or something. It doesn't matter. It's a dumb reasoning, but in my head, that's like the lore. So everybody on this planet speaks the same language. And the reason that epithets were, are have become more common over the last 500 years is because the last couple other languages got snuffed out and like integrated. So there is only one language. Oh, we know exactly what real ass celebrity we would get for EE. E. <laughs> oh, yeah. We know exactly it's, who, it's not, but it's not really a, it, it's it's Patrick Warburton. <laughs> yeah, we get Patrick Warburton. <laughs> I looked up how much he For costs. For a very specific character. It's, it's $35,000, so... Uh, Christ. Probably not gonna happen. So, uh, I don't think we're getting Patrick Warburton. I mean, I will, I will like, send a thing to his uh, manager and be like, Hey, do you want to, like, would Patrick be down to do an indie project and record for, like, I don't know, five, six hours for a lessened rate? Sometimes they say yes. No reason yeah, not to ask. To try. It's not like I'm gonna get blacklisted by PatrickWarburton.com and like, oh, <laughs> all of my opportunities to cast Patrick Warburton. <laughs> <laughs> There's a character we'd like him to play. He's <laughs> real important. He actually is pretty important now in this season, in the upcoming season. Wow. Wow. Right. First Arnold Markdown, now this. What will <laughs> We're being never... treated. Why are you guys mean to me? <laughs> <laughs> it's tradition. Friends. Thank you, honey. I love it when you make toast for me. I say to your mean little ass. Mean little ass. <laughs> <laughs> Confound those Dova boys. Confound those bonsai blasters. Oh my god, for fuck's sake, why is this on that layer? Oh. I hate Crusher. I hate Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate Larry. Who's Larry? And I hate Fred! <laughs> It's really fucking annoying. Will Ben ever get a bonsai nickname? Let me stop sucking. So no. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm gonna run to the bathroom be right back. Oh, oh God, boy. We have, to, we have to be the showrunners without Jello here. What do we do? Hold on. Lamp, I'm panicking. Hold on, I have I have a plan. Lamp I'm crying. What do we do? If you've been enjoying our commentary, you can find more of us at twitch.tv forward slash surprise RPG. We run a variety of tabletop games. We've got a game for everybody. Blaze in the Dark being a a, a dishonored like like a Victorian post fantasy kinda kinda heist thing. But like also we've got traditional fantasy and Evan Moore. Perhaps, uh, perhaps consider checking us out if you like those kinds of things. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> this is but, our scheduled commercial break. But that's addressed at Rube specifically. God, I love you. Gay. Kiss. <laughs> Blanket? I don't know if I'm allowed to. I'm not actually a mod here. I, I don't know if I'm a mod either. Oh, Jello doesn't have links turned off. I see. I see a degenerate. Are Giovanni's eyes pink because of his epithet? They're pink because they're pink. Yeah. A lot of things you'd think have deeper meaning don't. They just don't. They just don't. I don't want to burst Molly has the stars in her hair because she does. Because they're cute, and that's the reason. I think it was 
I think if I remember correctly, Jello like designed a different character that he was never gonna use for something. It was like, I like this. This will be Molly now. Yeah, yeah, that is what happened. Would you consider Giovanni a villain? No. Mm, no. Not anymore. Not even in anime campaigns, he's <coughs> really a villain. Like, he was the boss of two of the, like, sessions, but that doesn't mean he was the villain ever. Nah. He's just him. Because what? I was prolific in anime campaign, and I'd be in sessions where, like, it wouldn't even make sense. Like, I was there for all of, um, anime con. And Giovanni just sometimes had one-liners off to the side. Just because I was there. I went to jail and delivered cookies. <laughs> Why is the Bonsai Blaster rating system so confusing? It's because their leader is an idiot. Their leader is a fucking idiot. We can't tell you much about their leader, but fucking idiot. Trust us. Trust us. Everyone in that federation is an idiot, though, so that's not really saying very much. No, but like a different brand of idiot. Who is talking? Well, this is my voice. I'm Rube, the creator of Giovanni. And I'm Lamp, the creator of... Characters that were cut. Cut from the game. I'm the... I'm, back. <laughs> I'm the one who initiated the well-watching bit. That was that was my bit. Although although Aram Aram as Percy was instrumental in the Canadian dollar portion of that bit. Yeah, you can you can see the audio from the original bit if you look up uh, "All's Well That Ends Well." There's a there's an animatic. Someone uh, grabbed the audio and then like. I think, unfortunately, somehow compressed it even worse than it was originally. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, no, something really foul happened to the audio, but, like, it's... it's listenable. How the fuck is Howie that strong? Eat your vegetables work. Yeah. He's just... he's just strong. He just work. Who, who's the best cut character? Best cut from 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 AC, I imagine. I, I imagine. I mean, Don and Fusio. I I don't know who's gonna make the cut or not for the other seasons, and like. But like, I think we can safely say Don and Fusio because will not be making really the cut. Really funny, but he cannot make the cut. So I will say, for what it's worth. Nah, I guess I was gonna say that I think Eros has some. I I didn't. Care I think for him he had potential, but I wasn't good enough at RPM yet to really realize yeah, it. I, I think. I feel like down, if I took a second crack at it now, I'd be oh a lot God. better. As You'd be role. able to lean harder into stripper cop. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think there was a lot to do there, and just like there was a I lot just of wasn't good confident ideas. enough yet so I think now I'd be able to hit that a lot better there were a lot of good ideas in the first adventure and we all just were bad so we didn't get them stop asking us for anime campaign you don't want it trust me <laughs> please there are please so many people who are like so mad they can't look at anime like we're doing you a service I swear to God. Who versus and... Giovanni and his theme song from a couple years ago? Uh, some random announcer. Oh yeah, I don't like, know. Like voice Blaster clips that Plaster found, and then me occasionally yelling words. Bliss Ocean headquarters. <laughs> okay. I can sum up Sergeant Eros in one sentence. Two words, even. Stripper cup. That is the extent of it. He's he's in <laughs> it, like... I mean, you can he, hear His him. voice is on the radio. Stephen talking Kelly to Percy. plays him. And he's... It's, that's the joke. He's just a weird, the sexy... The joke is that he's sexy, and he goes, Cuck-lick. 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 And... <laughs> his epithet was nude. 
the, yeah, the more naked was he weird. was, the stronger he got. I think, I think written down that like that's why I was gonna say I guess Eros because even like writing Eros in, especially off of Percy, I think could have had some funny moments, but like you know, it's more prudent to have Ramsay here. Yeah, way more prudent. I also think that like. Yeah, more more characters bad. It's weird yeah. now watching uh, Ace like Bliss Ocean Curiosities and fucking Ramsey's not there. It's just bizarre. Because he super wasn't there. He's not there. But Goro was. Yeah. Hooray for Goro. <laughs> it's like, huh, weird that Goro made it, but also Goro barely made it. Because, um, like, Goro had a list, he had a listing on the audition, and he got, like, Goro's actor got paid as much as anyone else did. But, uh, fucking, I didn't even realize this, but, like, Car Crash has more lines than Goro. Those are, those are, all the Bonsai Blasters are new characters. Like, none of them were originally in anime campaign. Yeah, none of them were OG, but, like, it was just taking generic Bonsai Blasters and putting a name on them. And, like... In true tabletop fashion, that's all you need for people to fall in love with. No, them. people fucking love the bonsai blasters, dude. I, I, I think do. I see more really fan charming. art of them than like half of the other characters. Yeah. People go ape shit for those little fuckers. If um, I have, I have plans for. I need to find an excuse as to why. Giovanni can't recruit his own bonsai blasters, mostly because I don't want fucking six people on screen following Giovanni around. But yeah, I do have plans for some, all of them to reappear at least once, probably in just one scene. All of them in casual outfits, because people keep asking about that. We don't really have designs for them. Um, and I would Car like- Car Crash was the only one. <laughs> I would like Crusher to, uh, I would like, I, I want Giovanni to crash at Crusher's house, living in a tree house in the backyard to hide from the police. And Crusher keeps like bringing him gifts and baking him things because I don't know. I, I fucking, I think someone being oblivious to romance, like very obvious romantic advances is very funny. <laughs> and... It's cute and funny, but also a little sad. Which makes it funnier. <laughs> Thanks, Crusher. I love you as a brother. <laughs> the, only, <laughs> the only reason Crusher is gay is because legitimately the actor, like the, the uh, Caleb Yen, uh, who plays one of the main characters in, what is it called? No Gun Life, which is like a pretty major anime that came out this season. Um, he's very funny. He got to, he just came in last. We were all very tired and he just we were fucking around he just went i love you and i was like all right it's in the show uh spikes, <laughs> v, spikes va meg get back in here i'm gonna have you respond to that with i love you more then giovanni just won't respond it'll be funny because i can't i don't have the money <laughs> to bring kyle back in so that's that also my spaghetti is boiling so i'm gonna go get that hey guys if you liked us the last time Jello walked away, you're gonna love us now. God, I wish I wasn't sick. I guess I should say something. The entire history of flea circuses is very interesting. You see, hey, back Lamp, in the- I, My internet clips out for two seconds and you bring up the fucking flea circus. Wow. Yes. It wasn't rolling yet, but I see that the oh. lamp pulled out her signature move. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the next commercial break we'll talk about flea circuses. Should be. No good. promises. It's good ramble. It can kill like five to ten minutes depending on how slowly I feel like talking. Someone says you're quiet, Jello. How dare you? Marissa calls you out. Marissa. 
That was oh. by Marissa? Yeah, Marissa Lenti. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, Hi, Marissa. I've heard your name a bunch time. of times. I hear you're nice. Yeah, Marissa, if you're not doing anything, I'm more than happy to fucking throw you into this call. Marissa's always a fun... She's always Four a fun player time. Mode. Four player mode. Um, yeah, she wants that. Alright, cool. I'm pretty sure I have... Oh, we are on Discord. Is Discord still an ass for you? Let's find out. Lenti. Gotta have you somewhere. You're probably M. Lenti. Mlenti. Mlenti. Mlem. Mlem. Yeah, you're online. Mlem. Okay. I'm gonna toss you in here. Do, 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 do. Where the fuck? Yeah, there you are. Hi. God, it's been a long time since I've... The stink has come in. The stink is dang. Incoming stink. Here comes a fucking stink bomb. Okay. I invited her, I think. Yeah, she said she'll get a drink, so we'll cool, probably cool. wait a minute on that. Alright, in that case, I'm also gonna uh, go check on my hopefully boiling pasta water. Which will, I assume, immediately summon Marissa when I'm gone. The well, entire history of flea circuses is very interesting. Uh, you see, back in the uh, uh, back, there's actually two different kinds of flea circuses. Uh, there's the there's the real one, which is a small uh, circus operated by fleas due to their powerful proportional kick strength. Because in case you didn't know, flea <laughs> hi Marissa. You've hi. <laughs> You're lucky I died. Otherwise, you would have caught full blast of. Oh god, I flee circus ramble. <laughs> I'm here to save everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank god. Okay, I'm Also, back. it's nice to meet you guys. Hi. Hi. You too. Hello. <laughs> Those 348 Live people will never know the entire history of flea circuses unless they read the Wikipedia page like I did. Perfect. Hi, Jello. Hello. All right. I've been sitting here watching. It's been very fun. Thank you for watching. I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you got a chance to like scream at me from a Twitch chat since I make a <laughs> habit of any time somebody I know I do this with Scott Falco all the time where I'll I'll just jump into chat and be like, hey idiot, and then leave. <laughs> you did that to me once too. Oh, I've done that to you at least twice. <laughs> Marissa, you should introduce yourself to the the people. Sure. Some people may not know. And also know. us. Hi, everybody. My name is Marissa Lenti. I'm a voice actress and I work at Sound Cadence. I was the casting director on Epithet Erased, and I also voice Stink and the Cat. Marissa the is gun. the reason that. Marissa's pretty much the reason that Danny Chambers voices Molly and that Kyle like, yeah. Macy voices Giovanni. Because wow. I had, we had just had them both as major characters in uh, recent projects, and so I yelled at Jello about how great they were. And They're really like, great. I was like, I don't I know. Kyle's. And I was, I was very wrong to be <laughs> unsure <laughs> because they're so <laughs> fucking good. I, I finally, love them. I finally got to bump into Kyle again in person for the first time in like six months yesterday, while. Mm -hmm. Everyone and their dog is coming in to record for like one line for actor song connection. Woo! The episode where everybody says a thing. Just one though. I heard your background chatter, Jello. It was great. Oh, thank you. I know I know fuck all about my character, so <laughs> I can tell you things about your character, because I'm the one that had to learn who all the characters were. Oh, is there actual backstory for them? That's fun. Yes, well the great thing about all the characters who aren't important in Actor Song's connection is that they are important in the drama CDs. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you're in the Beautification Club along with Ray and Kakadu, the one that's in love with his sister. You know, the best characters. Oh, yeah, what? I remember Bruh? that. Dude, it's an anime. You <laughs> shouldn't be surprised. But, no. But... Bruh. I don't like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's anime, dude. That's anime. 
Yeah. But yeah, we, we got Danny in on the show because I had just directed Kimono Friends and she was the lead and she was amazing. And I was like, you know it'd be good if you if you had Danny. <laughs> if you used Danny. And I was like, uh, I worked with Danny like once on like a stupid Hamtaro abridged episode like five years ago and like I don't know. I don't know if I could see her as Molly and Marissa slapped me in the face. I was like, listen, idiot. <laughs> listen. <laughs> I was like, I just worked with this girl for like 80 hours. I'm telling you the truth. But I mean, that was like most of the casting process. I was like, hey, this I noticed this character here is is destined to be voiced by Oliver Tull. Do you want to just get him? <laughs> the, the best part of that one is like, I was like, I know, I, like, I looked that guy up and you're like, it was a pseudonym by the way. Like, it wasn't even, it was so funny because you like, you asked it in this way that was like, should I do this? Like, oh, hey, by the way, this character is just X from this anime. Did you want me to get that person? And I was just like, well, I already kind of looked into it. Like, just kidding. I already did. And I looked into it better <laughs> than you. And I already messaged him. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I know the guy who directed that anime, and I was like, I asked him, hey, this pseudonym, w did he do that because he doesn't want to be found, or, like, is it rude of me to ask? And he was like, no, yeah, that's, I'll, it's Oliver Tull. And I was like, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> and then we got him, and now he's Arnold. Yeah. It was really nice being able to be on this stream and act like I could contribute, but now you're here, but that was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, same! <laughs> I didn't know I didn't head like, yes, yes, the chaos symbols. On this it, one, I didn't even, I didn't even do that. I've got no reason to be here other than I'm good company. <laughs> and if it makes you feel better beyond the casting process, Marissa's biggest contribution was making me feel nice whenever, because she's like, after that, you were just like, yep, not working on Epithet. Uh, and, but I love it. <laughs> and then like, you would be the first person to be like, yeah, no, I, uh, so I spied on, I looked at our production server and watched the episodes early. They're really good. I'm like, oh, good. I was worried they sucked. Thank you. I like instantly <laughs> went from being the casting director to being a fan by the time I didn't have to cast anything anymore. And I think the greatest thing that I ever did as a stupid fan was I went on our secret server and I listened to the first Redwood Run episode with no uh, visuals. I just listened to the audio as I was going to sleep one night. And I was like, mm, I imagine this will be amazing once it's done. And I, was, I literally the next day the animation was done. My friends were like, do you want to watch it? And I was like, listen, I've seen this episode in my mind's eye. And uh, yes, the I will watch it again. The illusion will be shattered. <laughs> I just immediately watched it again. Like an idiot, I spoiled it for myself. Because I love it. And I, 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 I became the hype person who would go around the studio being like, everyone's doing a great job. I love the show. We Thank ge you. We genuinely needed somebody doing that, though. Like, no <laughs> joke. That, it's my job. That show was actively killing, at the very least, me and Natalie. I thought my biggest contribution was the stink voice, but I'm glad that my hype uh, helped. <laughs> <laughs> Your stink voice helped too. Every stink helps. Jello, did you tell the story of how the stink voice came to be? I I told it on the commentary, but I can tell it again for all the people who didn't buy it on my Patreon. <laughs> Hang on, let me reset. I have no money. money. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I should. Uh, th they're up on my YouTube as unlisted links, so I should share those with people. Um, so. Sorry, there we go. Um, originally, I, I don't know, like there's two origin parts, so I'm not sure which to start at. So, um, Stink exists at all because we were playing TKO, which is a Jackbox game. And uh, I think it was Glass, who sometimes is on these streams, uh, drew a farting cow drawing that is just, I have to have Stink on my computer somewhere. Hang on. Do I actually not? Or it's got to be in the server. Yeah, somewhere. it's it's pinned. It's I'm sure it's I pinned. I demanded in, the design it's from you. somewhere. It's pinned so in. You uh, must have it. Oh, not that one. The original. Oh, the original. Like OG yeah, stink. OG stink. It's definitely pinned somewhere in Rube's dumpster. Give me two seconds. Um, is stink a cow? It's not. Stink is a cow. 
I thought Are it was you a sure? Cat. It looks like a dog, <laughs> but uh, stink is stink. We specifically <laughs> gave uh, I specifically gave Ray. I was like, all right, it's this cow. But listen, stink is the human incarnation of like stink is the er example. Found it. Oh, cool. Found OG stink. I'll, I'll share it in just a second. I gotta take my my pasta out. Oh my god. <laughs> See, I thought Stink was a panda. I could have sworn it was a Dalmatian. Yeah, looking at this image, it's a Dalmatian, but in, like, the episode race of the show, it looked more like a cat to me. It's a Dalmatian reason. with hooves. Whatever Stink <laughs> looks like, it's not a cow. <laughs> Stink! The entire history of Flea Circus is this very- chat's demanding it. It's very interesting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you see, uh, the fun fact is that Flea Circus is where I actually oh! made my watch me. <laughs> 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 she has to deal with this crap from me a lot. Specifically. Specifically this. I know most people don't feel the need to have a pre-prepared preamble to kill time, but I do. And it's very helpful. I've talked about it many times. Rebecca Doodles from the chat wants us to talk about the time Jello shut off the entire studio with the press of a button. He got Wait. too excited and he kicked the power switch for the entirety of Studio A. <laughs> now, now I feel like there shouldn't be a switch that does that. Well, there is. And, and what because, of height that, too. because of that, the entire layout of Studio A has been changed. <laughs> That's probably for the best. <laughs> it's fine. We all make mistakes. We all learn to not have a switch that power cycles the entire studio at kicking height. Tips for yeah, voice acting? Learn how to act. <laughs> learn how to act. I mean, that's... Get a good mic, unlike okay. me. All right, I'm back. Let's share the stink Welcome shirt. Back. Um, so... <laughs> No, that's Howie. Actually, copy paste, please. Okay. Oh my god, it's so tiny. Here, perfect. Stink. Poster's done. So this is the stink shirt uh, with a drawing by glass. I believe the stink caption was Plaster, who is our composer. Uh, and this shirt came in like third, but because uh, half of us loved it and half of us were like, nah. And. Jay, my boyfriend, mentioned, he was like, this is the perfect shirt for a crappy background extra kid to be wearing. And I was like, yes, you know what I'm making? A show that needs crappy background extra kids. <laughs> so I I messaged Marissa, who had previously told me she, uh, we were talking in, I think it was on Tip of the Tongue, the podcast we used to do. It was mm -hmm. like, are there any voices you wish you got to use in things that you never get to use? And you were like, yeah, I've got one. Yeah, it's my Gone from Hunter Hunter impression. But it's not a real impression. It's a stupid over the top version of just, I love to eat pine cones. And you were like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's use that voice for something. It's cause I've like eating a pine cone is a joke that I have loved long before Apathetic Race because Homestar Runner <laughs> does it once and it's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And then you, apropos of nothing, came out of left field with the second eating a pine cone joke I'd ever heard. And I was like, <laughs> yes, this character will now exist and be Perfect. in a show where someone eats a pine cone. Uh, so I handed Marissa that shirt and I was like, all right, listen, Stink is, um, you know how in the 90s, there were only two types of toys, and it was like, Pink, you're a girl. It's baby throw up. Learn how to be a mom. <laughs> and um, then on the other hand, there's like, it's Dr. Like Dr. Grossenheimer's goo factory. Ew, my little <laughs> sister hates it. I put it in her cereal. And like, those are the two genres. I was like, Stink is the epitome of 90s boy toy. Like, well, though, that's a bad way to phrase it. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh Stink, uh -oh. Stink is like the marketing fucking 
he is the he's the thing they pull down on the projector. Like this is who we are selling to. So <laughs> I shitty I, little boys. I sent Rhea a bunch of those like Doctor Grosso's Goo Factory bug maker things and some old crazy bone designs. I was like, I want you to draw it like that and make a stink shirt off of that. And she did, which is why it doesn't look like any animal. Ne- like it looks like a panda cow. <laughs> <laughs> It's specifically off of Crazy Bones. Hmm. And then I bullied you for it so I could put it on a tank top. I mean, I genuinely like the idea of a stink shirt being available for purchase. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, I think like that's one of the key... This is still a shirt. 